Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're going to talk about perovskite solar cells. So let's dive deep into it. Now you have to understand, solar is here, solar does work, then what's the problem? What's the quote unquote problem that we are looking for something else? Because it has proven ROI, meaning people who are investing their money into it, they are getting their money back, meaning it's self-fulfilling now and more and more people are doing it and I am talking about India, I am talking about China, I am talking about every other country. So anybody who has brain is pouring money into solar without any hesitation. So what's the problem? Problem is that it's very hard to scale up, meaning the technology we have, the ecosystem that we have, that's how we are building it. Is it wor working? Absolutely. We have hundreds of gigawatts of power output. Awesome. Now, Problem is that we can't really scale it beyond too much. Like basically, if we need 500 gigawatt per year, we are barely able to manufacture 100 gigawatt of capacity. So we are limited, meaning if you really have to stretch it and be like 100% renewable and the amount of solar would be needed for that, we cannot produce it flat out. We cannot, like our production rate is just not good enough. I have linked an amazing video that is like freaking 10 years ago and it shows every single step. Basically, how do you take raw minerals to actual solar panel? Like, of course, it's a bit simplified, but you get to see every single step and it's amazing. I would urge you to watch that. So that's the first problem is like, if you really have to scale it up, we can't. And what about efficiency? Meaning how much oomph is falling on it and how much you can get out of it? That's 30%. And that 30% is lab theoretical maximum. Nobody has actually ever achieved it kind of scenario. Uh, so that 30% is like a scientific limit. It's like, we know if you are exceeding this, you are doing something else. For example, you are using a multi-junction solar array. Yeah, you can bypass 30% easily but at that point you are like quote unquote cheating single junction should only be under 30% and that's like hyper best scenario real world like the panels that we have deployed in India, you are talking about 15 to 20% and it drops as uh, the day heats up basically. Your panels in the morning, they're like JJ, your power output over time, yeah, it will start to go down. Now, of course, it goes down a little, but a little of, let's say, India's big ass farms that are like 2 gigawatt, little bit of drop in 2 gigawatt, it's still a big ass drop. So that's a very serious issue. And the fact is the panel, the cell itself heats up a lot. I mean, bonkersly large amount of heat, uh, gets piled up here and they can easily reach 100 degrees celsius like these puppies get hot now what about making them like how do we make it well it's very energy intensive like primary cost of the panel comes in two places first places is the precision required for the making the second is the goddamn energy bill meaning to take the quote-unquote sand and make that sand into the stuff that you want to use it takes insane amount of heat that's why i urge you please watch the goddamn video it's bonkers the amount of energy we have to pour just to make it like to give you a context in carbon terms it takes two years for a solar panel modern solar panel to uh, produce enough energy to justify its own existence two whole years basically the panel producing power for two years yeah throw all that energy where that's how much energy it took to make this the energy cost is high like bonkersly high on top of them it also has supply constraint meaning Inherently, that's why I specified having silicon, that's child's play. Having quality silicon that is needed for these things, yeah, that's a like, no, that's a like, that's no. It's very, very, very difficult. And it does require some other doping agents for making N junction and P junctions. Those puppies are also very rare. So, and given the fact that a single cell has a lot of material in terms of grams, yeah. Like if you really want to stretch it, scale it up, it's just not gonna work very efficiently. So that's some serious problem with current solar technology. It works, but it's like we cannot expand it further. So what about perovskite? Now perovskite is a weird thing and you have to be a chemistry guy to understand this, which I am not. So the best I can explain it to you is like it's a formula, anything that matches the, form, uh, you know, matches the formula of A, B, X, 3. What does that mean? As A is cations, it could be organic or inorganic. B is heavy metal, that's why you generally hear talks about lead. And then you have X, which is halogens. So this is the idea. Now here's the deal. Perovskite is not an element, nor it's a specific compound. It's a category. It's a category of mineral, which any mineral that fulfills this uh, basic requirement is uh, what we call perovskite. Now you can have multiple like uh, C-A-T-I-O-3, then you can have M-A-L-H-S. I'm not making this up. This is actual name. And C-H-3-N-H-3-P-B-L-3. Yeah, it's weird things, chemistry things. So this is the main structure. Basically, you have a cube and a voxel inside that cube. So it's a very, very interesting and unique design. Now, the benefit of that is because you have three variables that you are controlling. Basically, you have three throttles or knobs you are controlling. You have very uh, interesting mix of properties. 
like you get to do amazing things like you can tune it very interestingly so what can you tune like what do you want to tune first is band gap tuning for example when you are talking about silicon you are limited by silicon's uh, band gap why because it's made out of silicon if you are making gallium you are limited by gallium silicon but what if you have a throttle on that it was like hey i'm going to change the b variable so i work on different system now if you are heard the recent hype of like you know quantum dot nano dot technology this is what they are talking about basically band gap how is things are reacting how they are uh, absorbing energy how they are releasing the energy so the benefit of band gap tuning is that you can take the material tune it or of course make it out of different mixture and you can absorb different wavelength what wavelength every single one that's the amazing part of it like silicon is limited you want to make it as broadband as possible inherently limited by the laws of physics here it's like no problem take one that takes care of the basically the blue puppies take another that takes care of the green puppy then you have last one take care of the reds and by the way some designs also allow you to absorb infrared at that point in time if you successfully do this your panel will not be producing few percent more power it will be producing multiples of the power basically 2x more power maybe even 3x why because it can absorb all of it without breaking the laws of physics it's just basically rather than rejecting or creating a waste it it's like bro i can eat it all day so that's the most amazing aspect of it and manufacturing and uh, basically mass producing and all that jazz it's a very low heat meaning the operation is more closer to printing rather than like you know forging the hells of hell it's not that it's like bro i got this just print that puppy super is a super low energy intensive process and not to mention you can also make them flexible that and what you are seeing here is basically the spray it on and then it crystallizes over time so that's why the crystallization is falling behind the uh, nozzle printer nozzle so super low intensity city meaning if a uh, normal solar farm will take a uh, solar farm say solar panel manufacturing solar cell manufacturing site would be consuming let's say 1 gigawatt of power this puppy will barely consume barely 100 megawatt barely so that's a very marked uh, you know change so to say on and this is on a chemistry level like uh, almost on physics level that's why we say physics engineering and economics on physics layer this has that many advantages like where you can fine tune your mixture that's why some people will talk about lead other people will talk about something else you can go yolo on it so what was the logic the logic is basically it will allow you to make cheaper and i do not mean little bit cheaper i mean exponentially cheaper we are not talking about like oh uh, you know this panel used to cost let's say 10000 rupees now it's going to cost you know 9000 no 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 10000 to 1000 that's what we are talking about like exponential uh, re reduction of the cost and it can scale up meaning a country like india can truly say okay we got this we are making solar all the way we can really cover every single water canal india has india has bonkers amount of water canals so if we can cover all the water canals save water keep the panels cool because again water is blowing flowing into the water saving land uh, reallocation would not be needed and voila lot of power so we can really do it and scale it up to bonkers level meaning is like we can just mass produce it uh, you know without any issue and what about return on investment the most critical aspect is physics engineering economics economics is the daddy layer so that daddy roi uh, it's in months meaning every design is like bro it may take you 5 months to pay back that's how big it is it's not like half of the lifespan of the product meaning it's like oh it's a 25 year uh, solar farm uh, you should get all your money back by the 10 and 15 years from that is like you know you useful no 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 this is like bro you put it you get back your money in like as in like energy in like you know let's say 2 years maximum like super duper inefficient realistically it should be in like few months so it's that's exponential uh, roi improvement also no supply chain shortage or issue because here's the even if it consumes something very rare let's say titanium or things of this nature because it's consuming nanograms of it you can still have like one ton of titanium and you're like bro we set for few years because it's consuming so it's like it's a thin film you're printing it that's how thin it is if you take a, a example at silicon uh, you know the majority of the reason why solar panels are so expensive we do not have the technology to cut them meaning when you make the ingot uh, the ingot has to go and get sliced now how do you slice something like that well you can't use a normal saws because again they will waste too much uh, so what they have thread diamond in embedded threads that thread is looping around and it's cutting that now it wastes a lot like yes your ingot would be this thick by the time you collected all the panels and all that just and you pile them up you will find 50 to 30% gone that top quality 99.99999% pure silicon gone it just went into the cutting process so 
it is very serious uh, waste of thing and again some people are experimenting on uh, basically particle accelerator where they're going to bombard it with particles and pile up the particle exactly in the fixed depth and then that particle uh, bombardment will break it apart from bottom so it will be very uh, low wasteful that alone will drop our prices if somebody can crack it here it's not an issue it's like basically you are uh, you know depositing few atoms you don't have to worry about it and it also unlocks one of the most amazing function that is low cost multi junction solar cell meaning uh, if you are rich guy basically let's say you are darpa and you are like bro money is no object for me and military wants to come to you as like bro can you please give me a satellite that is super awesome and super amazing they are like okay i got you back but here's it if you do that your cell farm basically the panels you need would be huge anybody can see it anybody will be able to track it you're like hey i got you back you use this puppy, which we call multi-junction array. Now these puppy can come up to tri-junction and the highest I have seen is around 51% efficiency. I'm not even joking, like I did not even knew that was possible. They achieved it, they have three junctions. They have gallium, uh, basically different variants of galliums and voila, you achieve almost 50% of it, meaning your panel shrinks dramatically and these sort of puppies are also used for high intensity mission basically if you are making solar parker probe and it has to make love to the sun at that point in time this also works very well because again okay, it can work at very high intensity so this technology allows you to just layer them on it's like just lay it on them no problem just printer one printer two printer three printer four done go home and most companies that are working on this technology they are like they are directly starting at two junction they're not even trying for a single junction it does not make too much sense you want exponential jump every time you're changing technology so they are working on that system then we come to another aspect it's also very flexible because inherently the cell stack basically this puppy is very tiny it's like a nano scale like not nano i would say but so thin that you can put it on a very flexible substrate like polymers and benefit of that is like you can have truly flexible cell now if you are familiar with current solar technology you know for a fact that we have flexible solar cells problem with them is they are so inefficient that people only use them if they have no other choice like that's the only reason anybody uses flexible solar cell because these things like normal solar panels awesome solar flexible solar panels they are useless they are like so inefficient it's like damn unless you have some specific reason nobody touches them here there is no such compromise meaning if you have a weird building and you want to cover those puppies up with solar you put that puppy you forget about it and you get the same amount of energy or even more which you will get from a normal panel so flexible here actually makes sense it's not flexible for the flexible sake it's flexible without compromise in terms of power output so logics are amazing here now then that creates the biggest issue it's like we are talking about this so many people have uh, researched this and like you know people are talking like it has higher efficiency than this like why the heck we don't use it what's the limit the limit is this puppy cannot survive in real world it's almost like carbon nanotube where we say no, carbon nanotube can do everything except leave the lab is the same thing here so panel life to give you a contrast the panels solar panels that we have right now we know for a fact they will survive for 25 years how do we know we have built a few of them long ago and again we have enough real world real data to know that this puppy does work it's silicon is like bro i'm not the strongest i'm not the magical material but i got you back it's like i got you back i'm gonna be with you for 25 years and it has proven track record of that this puppy, you will be lucky to get two years out of it. And I'm like, I'm exaggerating. Like it will barely generally disintegrates in a few months. So fundamentally, it cannot last. And everybody is working their ass off. All the companies, all the institutes, all the research labs, they're working their ass off, not on efficiency, not on making it cheaper, how to mass produce it. It's like, how the heck you make sure this puppy lasts? Because be mindful, there are many companies in 2018, 2019, 2020, there was like almost over hype of this. And everybody's like, we're gonna make a panel, we're gonna sell it. And then the panel came into real life and they're like, poof, gone. So that creates a very serious issue. Uh, you have to understand, there have been amazing amount of claim about the perovskite technology. This is going to be this, it's going to be that. But you have to understand, do not be angry at scientists. Uh, they are working in labs. Everything works in lab. We, this is the most odd part about uh, basically real life scientific development. It's like everything works in lab. Like I'm not talking about malice or incompetence. It's like you do things in lab, it works. You do in real life, it's like lol. Ask any scientists that have successfully taken an idea and uh, delivered it. They're like, bro, in lab, it was like, oh, it's going to take a few months. And when they started 50 years ago, I started this project and I'm not even joking. Look up how long ago we knew about lithium ion batteries. We had the minerals, we had everything just to make sure the damn thing works really well in real life. Took a bonkers amount of money and bonkers amount of time. Oh, also look up lead acid battery. 
that also probably took around one century of R&D. So it's one of those things. Claims just listened from one year, rejected from another year. Claims mean nothing because most of the claims are coming from labs and everything works in lab. But here's the, there is no real world panel that you can just buy. I cannot just, here's my Amazon link, buy this panel. I cannot tell you to do that. You simply cannot do that. Of course, there are some companies, some scientific labs for selling you for research and development. Yeah, there are there, but it's not like, okay, I'm gonna buy it and I'm gonna put it. It's not there. Even though it has crossed all the milestones that silicon industry needed in order to uh, get into the quote unquote market. Silicon was barely at 10% when it started to break into real world. This puppy is far ahead of that, but it's not breaking simply because nobody can trust this. And again, it does not last, so why would anybody trust you? Even if you can get your return on investment, let's say two months, and you have to replace in two years, you may think it's a good deal, but it's not. Because every time you have to replace it, you have to invest in what we call human cost. It's expensive and it keeps getting more and more expensive. So fundamentally, people will still choose that 25 years. Put it and forget it. That's what our psychology loves. Put it and forget it. So what we can expect in the future? Well, you have to understand this. We have to move away from our current design of solar panels. What we are using right now is a single mode system. Basically, we have solar panel, the end. That's not gonna fly as global warming heats up, simply because we have to use this unit of area far more efficiently. For example, extracting heat out of it, basically running water tubes behind it. And these are what we call hybrid solar panels and uh, just get hot water out of it. Now you're like, why? Well, uh, for Western people, it's kind of amazing simply because they need heating. So the solar panel is producing the electricity and the hot water is a side bonus. They are like, shut up and take my money. Yeah, even Linus Tech Tips did that in his house. Uh, but for Indians, it's kind of difficult because again, we live in hot. Like we will say, oh, if it's only 40 degrees Celsius, we'll like, it's, it's okay, it's okay. 45 degrees Celsius, yeah, it's a bit hot. You know, today I'm noticing it's a bit hot. 51 degrees Celsius, uh, yeah, today, today, man, 51 degrees Celsius, that's hot. I'm not even joking that those are real temperature in India. Real, 50 plus degrees Celsius. And I'm like, uh, I was in Bangalore and there was this area which like giant skyscrapers, it heated up that the, I came out of like an air conditioned bus, I was cooked right there on the street. It was damn hot. So we have to do something for the panels. We have to basically cool it because here's the energy cannot be created or destroyed. So if you are running water behind it, water is heating up. That means the panels are cooling down. So panel solar cell junction temperature will go from like, let's say 100 degrees Celsius or 120 degrees Celsius to 70. It will work more efficiently. And every experiment we did, these puppies are producing 10% more power. And their biggest advantage is longevity, meaning the panel degradation is exponentially slower, meaning after 25 years, how much capacity you would have lost, that will go down in proportion, like uh, let's say it would have gone down 10%, it would only go down 2%. Like it really helps panels to last much longer. Now what Indians can do with the hot water? Well, there are some uses, for example, we can use that hot water to run, uh, basically, we have to boost the heat in that, because let's say if uh, hot water is only 50 or 60 degrees Celsius, it's not that hot. We need something like, uh, basically we need temperature delta. So if you want to run air condition at night, we need to heat the water to such a point of like, let's say 70 or 80 degrees Celsius. If we have hot water and ambient temperature drops, which drops at night to let's say 40 degrees Celsius, then you have 40 degree temperature delta. That's more than good enough to run an absorption chiller. Uh, that's one thing we can do. But right now, India does not have an ecosystem built for it. But we have to do something with it because otherwise all solar farms will slowly lose their efficiency. So our ROI that is awesome right now, it may go back to being worse. We have to do this. This is a very serious thing. And what about perovskite? Now, here's the perovskite needs time to cook. Realistically, it just needs time to cook. People are getting too hyper excited. And like again, two years back, three years back, it's almost similar. It's giving me the first time I heard about it. I rejected it out of hand directly. And be not because the technology is fake. It's, it's real. It's really awesome. But it's like whenever I hear top technology that can like it can do this, it can do this, it can do that. I know for a fact there will be like gacha, and it, that gacha will be like no, I don't work. It's exactly the same thing. So, you know, carbon nanotube, it can do everything except leave the lab. So this technology, I have much uh, greater faith, but it will take time. Like, do not expect it, tomorrow I'm gonna buy this. Take time, relax, chillax, apply one solar farm. At the end of that solar farm's life, I do expect this technology to finally reach maturity. Then let's see. But this puppy will take time to, it needs some cooking time, so to say. So this was my presentation on uh, basically solar peroxide systems hopefully you have liked it learn from it in that case please give the like button share it amongst your friend that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me extra disappointment please leave a comment because i do try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching